Kubernetes node port, load balancer, and ingress. These are all different ways to route traffic to your services inside the Kubernetes cluster. You can make your service available on the internet for everyone, or you can choose to only allow access to your services within your private network. You can use any of these strategies for either option. In Kubernetes, the most basic type of service you can create is cluster IP service type. It allows communication only between services within the same cluster. It's important to understand that you cannot use this type to expose your service to the outside world. Or can you? Now, aside from debugging, the most common use case is to expose the Kubernetes dashboard. Here is YAML definition of cluster IP service. This is internal Kubernetes dashboard. To access it from your laptop, you can use kubectl proxy command and navigate to the local host in your web browser. This is the first approach to expose a service outside of Kubernetes cluster. You can also use port forward command with it. I have created a dedicated video that provides more examples and describes different ways to expose a service from EKS cluster. Most of these methods are generic and can be applied to any cluster. Now let's go back. There are a few scenarios in which you might want to use this method. Perhaps you need to debug your application and want to connect directly to it from your development host. Or maybe you want to expose internal services and dashboards to your team members when VPN isn't available. However, this method isn't suitable for exposing production services to clients. Next is a node port, which is the most primitive way to expose services to the internet. Normally, we don't place Kubernetes nodes in public subnet, but in this case, we have to give the Kubernetes nodes public IP addresses and create a firewall rule to let incoming traffic through. This could already create a potential security risk. The way it works is like this. You open a port on Kubernetes node, which can be a virtual machine and any traffic that is sent to that port then goes to the service that you want to expose. Here is an example of the node port. The only difference here is that instead of cluster IP, we have node port. Also, we need to specify the port on the VM that we want to open for traffic. In this example, we use 31060 port number. In this case, a request can be sent to any Kubernetes node, and if your application is located on a different node, the request will still be forwarded and received by your app. Besides the security concerns related to assigning public IP addresses to nodes and opening a firewall rule, there is also concern that every time you add or remove Kubernetes node, you might potentially need to provide a new IP address for your client or update the DNS record if you created one. So when should you use it? As you can see, there are many downsides to this method. You can only expose a single service per port. You can only use ports within the range of 30,000 to 32,000. Then if the Kubernetes node IP changes, you'll need to deal with it, possibly updating the DNS record. I don't recommend using node port in production to expose services. But let me give you an example where you might use node port. Let's say you need to show a demo for a potential client. In that scenario, you could use node port for a short time. You may see node port service types in your clusters even if you haven't created them yourself. Frequently, load balancer services create them. They add all Kubernetes nodes to the target group and internally route traffic using node port. All right, next we have load balancer service type. This is a pretty standard way to expose a service to the internet. Also, you can expose that service within your VPC using a private load balancer. When you declare a service of type load balancer, the cloud controller manager will create a corresponding load balancer based on the cloud where you deployed your Kubernetes. You can use annotations to configure some attributes. For example, in AdBS, if you want to make your load balancer private, you would use this annotation. So when would you decide to use it? Well, if you want to expose the service directly, this is a default method. It doesn't provide filtering, routing, etc. This means you can send almost any kind of traffic to it, like HTTP, TCP, UDP, WebSockets, gRPC, or whatever else. 
The biggest downside to this method is that you need to create a service of type lol bouncer for each application you want to expose, which means Kubernetes will create lol bouncers for each of those services. This can become very expensive. Now, the last type is ingress. However, it's not a service type. Instead, it sits in front of multiple services and acts as a smart router or entry point into your cluster. You can do many different things with ingress, and there are many types of ingress controllers, each with their own capabilities. Ingress allows both path-based and subdomain-based routing to backend services. For example, you can route everything on apiexample.com to API service and everything under the path example slash foo to the foo service. So when should you use it? Ingress is the most powerful method for exposing services, but it's also the most complicated. There are many different types of ingress controllers, including Nginx, Kong, Istio, and more. There are also plugins for ingress controllers, like Cert Manager, that can automatically provision and renew TLS certificates for your services. With ingress, you only need to maintain a single load bouncer, which is much cheaper than using load bouncer service type. Plus, you get many features out of the box with ingress, such as TLS authentication, routing, and more. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.